Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and it is our prayer time this morning, and I'm so excited to be with you. It's Monday morning, and it's a brand new week for us today. And we're going to open our time with a word of prayer, and then there's lots of things that we want to cover today in prayer. So, Father, we thank you today for this day. And, of course, Lord, we want to uh, pray your agenda today. Holy Spirit, there is such a wonderful fluidity in prayer. That means that, Lord, as we pray, you bring things up to our attention, things that are from the realm of the Spirit, which need to be made mention in the natural realm. And we want to be those instruments today that make that happen. And we thank you for all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it's always important to start off our week in the right manner. So, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we're going to start off our time together with Matthew 633 that simply says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things are going to be added unto us, Lord, today. We want to make sure that the things that we are doing, the things that we are thinking, the things that we are living out day by day, moment by moment, hour by hour, are the things that are going to bring glory and honor to your name. There's an old song that goes like this, in my life, Lord, be glorified today. And that is, of course, our goal and aim. We know that to glorify you, that means that we are to exhibit and demonstrate in our lives your essence, your character, and your nature. That means that, Lord, we demonstrate in our lives the attributes of love, such as love is patient, love is kind. Love, of course, does not uh, rejoice in evil, but rejoices with good. Lord, we want to exhibit those things today. We know that, Lord, love is the foundation of everything that we do. It is, of course, the basis of our faith, which is, of course, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith in a simple word is trust. And, Lord, today, we trust you. There is that wonderful promise found in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, that if we trust the Lord with all our hearts, we do not lean to our own understanding. In all ways, we will acknowledge you, and Lord, you will direct our path. It all starts, Lord, with putting you first, making you our priority today, doing the will of our Father. That is the wonderful example that our Savior gave us when he was on this planet doing your work. He was the incarnation. He was God with a face. In those times, he wanted to do your will. I remember that wonderful story, statement. When Jesus was found in the temple in Luke chapter 1, and his mom said, why did you put this through it all through this? You answered Jesus. You said, where else would I be but in my father's house doing my father's business? That is what our aim and goal is today, is that, Lord, throughout this day, we would do your will. Now, Lord, we're cognizantly aware of the fact that the only day that we have before us is this day. We're also aware of the fact that this may be our last prayer time together. Now, Lord, I'm not being morbid in any way. I just know that the reality is that we may not live through this day. There are many people who will get up this day and then something will happen that will launch them into eternity. So it is absolutely essential that, Lord, as we start our day, that we are ready for whatever comes our way. The life that we live is fluid. That means that anything can happen at any time. One moment, an event could change our lives forever. I remember the story of a young girl who was about 19 years old. She had just gotten off work and she was walking on her way towards home. And as she was approaching a crosswalk, she actually, it was that time of the night where it was twilight 
and not exactly dark. Now, she did, of course, put on the lights for the crosswalk, but she had no idea that at that time there was an individual that was pulling out of the gas station of where she was and didn't take that second look. Well, in that moment, her life was ended. Now, when she started off that day, she never thought that she would find herself in eternity. And many of us, Lord, are like that. We don't think along that lines. But Father, we need to think along those lines. We need to always be doing what Oswald Chambers said, living in the light of eternity. Help us, Lord, to recognize that. And so, Lord, when we have these prayer times, we want to make sure that we are being effective and fervent in our prayer times. That's why we are seeking first the kingdom of God in his righteousness and asking you, Lord, to add all the things that need to be in our lives. Now, Lord, we're not just talking about food, clothing, transportation, and shelter. We're talking about all the tangible and intangible things that need to be added to our lives, that bring quality to our lives, that enable us, Lord, to be a blessing to those around us, Lord, today. With that thought in mind, Lord, we're going to present our bodies to you as a living sacrifice. We're giving our time, our talents, and our resources, our past, our present, our future. We're giving, Lord, right now everything that we are, everything that we're going to be over to you right now in the name of Jesus. Now, we recognize that, Lord, there are two qualities that you want to bring into our lives. That, of course, is righteousness, Lord, which is what we want to be because when we present our body to you as a living sacrifice, we become holy and we become set apart for you. And that's what we want to be, set apart for holy purposes. Lord, I read today in James about the one thing that we want to be is unpolluted by the world. We don't want to be stained by this world. And we know how easy it is to become that way. Pride, pleasure, and possessions are all around us. And as well, the motivation by the world, the pressure by the world to conform to these things. But Lord, that's not what we're going to do. The second part, of course, of Romans 12, 1 and 2 is do not conform to the images and the standards of this world. We are cognizantly aware that we are constantly being bombarded and also as well, Lord, attacked by the world. They want us to submit to them. They want us to become consumers. They want us to, of course, do what they do because the simple fact is it doesn't make us any different. But Lord, we're not called to basically conform. We're called to stand out. We're called to be a blessing in our world. And so, Lord, how does that happen? It happens by the transformation of our mind. A person said to me one day, what is walking in the Spirit? Well, after a little investigation, I found out it is nothing more than submitting your thought life to God, doing what Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, whatsoever things are right, whatsoever things are holy, praiseworthy, and virtuous, um, good and honest and of good report. He says, think on these things. Basically, what we think about is what comes out in our speech, in our actions, and in our attitudes and motives. That's what we need to be cognizantly aware of. It was Gordon MacDonald who said this, when you are preparing for the day, order your private world. And when you have your private world in order, then it will be projected and lived out and demonstrated in your public persona and world. What goes, What's in your heart will come out. And Lord, that's what we want. We want the good things to come out. And that's why right now we're spending this time in prayer, preparing for the week. Now also as well, Lord, it prepares us for the highest and holy and noblest calling, and that is, of course, to pray. And that's where we find ourselves today. Lord, 
today, we want to pray for people. We know that, Lord, today, many people are facing incredibly difficult circumstances. Some are struggling with just the basics of necessity. For example, in my province of Alberta, 20% of Albertans are dealing with what we call food insecurity. That means that there is not enough money to buy the basic foods of life. There are actually parents that are going without food so that their children can eat. And then there are children, think about that, Lord, one in five Albertan children are not getting enough to eat. Now, that really causes all kinds of problems, especially when we're heading into a brand new school program. Lord, we know, for example, in the city of Edmonton, there are many children that need the programs of just being able to have food during the day. Lord, thank you for all those school programs where people are able to, especially children, are able to eat. Now, Lord, over the summer, many families struggled with food insecurity. Many families are struggling today with just keeping the heat on. And as we head into, of course, the winter season, we find that, Lord, food insecurity and and uh, basics of life are becoming more and more difficult for many people. And it seems these days that governments care more about collecting taxes and raising government services than they do about the average person. Father, we want to pray for people today. We know that you are Jehovah Jireh. That means that, Lord, you can supply every need according to your riches and glory. We're grateful for that. We are grateful today, Lord, that you can do that. And we're expecting, Lord, that to happen. We're expecting that, Lord, you're going to take those riches in glory and you're going to distribute them into our life situation. Father, we're not going to win if we don't trust you. There's a, a wonderful scripture that says, trust the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is not just a wonderful Bible bullet or a Bible cliche, or even a Bible promise. It is very practical in its application. And Lord, that's why we want to pray for people today. Lord, we all know someone who is struggling in some area today. And thank you that, Lord, in this moment, you are becoming Jehovah Jireh. We especially pray for families that, Lord, are struggling in this economic times because what it creates is economic stress. And families, especially husbands and wives, start talking about what is a priority and what is not a priority. And each one has a different view of this. And this can cause marital strife and marital battles. And Father, we know that the number one difficulty, the number one thing that families and especially husbands and wives fight over is, of course, the family budget. They both have come into the marriage with different expectations financially. And many, many of them, Lord, are struggling with a certain area. And Father, this can cause marital strife and problems. So today, we, of course, are praying for them. We are praying together, Lord, for unity. Now, Lord, we do know that the number one way that can bring unity into a family is, of course, to invite you to be part of the equation. And that's what we're praying for today. We're praying today that couples will begin, oh God, to invite you into their family situation. There's an old cliche, an adage that says simply this, the family that prays together stays together. Lord, I have discovered that to be personally true. When my wife and I pray together about whatever situation that we have to pray about, Lord, we know that you are the third person in that equation. And of course, we also know the Bible says where two or three is agree as touching anything, it shall be done. Well, Father, that's the power of united prayer. That's why when we pray daily together, we are 
asking you, Lord, together to meet the needs, to touch people in ways that, Lord, can only be supernatural. That is, of course, the secret of united and intercessory prayer. Now, Father, today as well, we want to pray for people that have physical, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, financial, and family needs. We want to pray for people's emotional and mental health today. Father, we know that it says, in, for example, in 1 Peter 2.24, that by your stripes we're healed. Now, Lord, that's not just in the physical realm. It is in the holistic part of our lives. Lord, we can be as damaged in our emotions and in our mental health as we can in our physical. Lord, often the uh, mental and emotional health will actually bring on physical trauma. And so, Lord, that's why it is so important that we have proper mental health and proper emotional health. Now, Father, we have a wonderful scripture found in 2 Timothy 1.7 that helps us, Lord, in this area. And it simply says this, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Now, of course, fear is caused by the fact that we have some insecurity, some trauma in our lives. And we have this 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 uh, emotion that says we're not going to make it this this reality whether it is a r true reality or a perceived reality that we are are going to be overcome overwhelmed and this causes an emotion of fear but also as well lord we are well aware of the fact that there is a spiritual component when it comes to fear it actually is a spirit that dominates, manipulates, and attacks, Lord, at the very core of who we are, which is, of course, our self-esteem, our self-preservation, and our significance or self-worth. And so it, it continually uh, attacks those areas. And Father, the only way that it can truly be expelled from our lives and overcome is, of course, in you. So today, Lord, we are coming against every spirit of fear in whatever form it would come today. We are commanding you right now in the name of Jesus to leave us alone. We're telling you that by the blood, the word, and the name, you have no right. You have no authority and you have no power. Lord, we're doing this today both as an example, but also as well, Lord, as a freedom moment. Lord, we've all struggled with fear in some area of our lives. And there is certain areas of our lives where we still struggle with fear. So, Father, we are expelling this thing. We are exposing it in our lives, and we are telling it that it has to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Now, we also know that Jesus says, when you expel an evil spirit, such as fear. You have to fill the void instantaneously and immediately because what's going to happen is that spirit will begin to look for a new host. And when it doesn't find a new host, it will come back and find your temple all clean. And then what will happen is it will go and find seven worse demonic entities than itself. And it will become a gatekeeper for these all these other demonic entities and of course, what will happen is the individual who had this demonic spirit expelled and did not fill it will be worse off than it was when they were when they started off. So, Lord, we're going to fill it right now. Now, what are we going to fill it with? Well, I love Pete, uh, Paul when he said, okay, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love. So, Lord, we're going to fill our temple right now with the love of God. Thank you for this wonderful communicated attribute that, Lord, you can give us today. We want to walk in love today. It is the foundation of our faith and the foundation of our hope. It is the essence and character of who you are. Today, in this moment, we want to comprehend the length, the breadth, the height, and the depth of God's love. 
It is perfect love that casts out all fear. That's why we want to put that in our lives. We want it to become part of our identity, part of who we are, part of our essence and our character. Fill us with your love today. The second thing that we want, Lord, is the power of God. Lord, there's a power struggle going on in our world today. Now, Lord, if we walk today in resurrection power, which we are now appropriating and applying to our life situation, Lord, we're going to have the power to become conquerors. We're going to have the power to become overcomers. We're going to have the power, Lord, to become, Lord, today, of course, warriors and not warriors. We are going to be walking today in victory. We refuse to become victims anymore. That's you, the power that you give us. Also as well, Lord, the third attribute that we want in our lives is, of course, the self-discipline or the self-control that only the Lord can bring into our life situation today. Thank you today that this wonderful communicated attribute of God is also as well a fruit of the Spirit. Lord, thank you today that you have given us all these wonderful things in our lives. From there, Lord, we're going to launch into praying for other people. Father, we want to see people healed and made whole today. We want those that come across our path today to know that there is an answer. You know, it was Andre Crouch that quoted or wrote a song back in 1969 that went something like this. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other. Jesus is the way. It was also as well Bill Gaither who wrote the song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Lord, it's because of who you are and what you have done through your broken body and shed blood that, Lord, whatever we come across today, whoever we come across today, you have given us the answer. And we can say to them, listen, I know that what you're going through right now is pretty tough. But I want to tell you that there is an end game. There is someone who can help you to get through this. And I want to pray for you. And Father, in that moment, when we pray for them, that wonderful peace that passes all understanding, that wonderful love that is beyond comprehension, that wonderful grace, which is God's riches at Christ's expense, that ability to finish well. Father, we want to be individuals that finish well. Lord, I, I think of a story of, of a young man, and I, I'm looking it up right now because, Lord, this young man, his name happened to be John Stephen Akare. And John Stephen Akare was a young man that was running an, uh, a marathon in, Me in Mexico City. He was a Tanzanian runner back in 1968. Now, what happened to him was he got into a collision with another runner. He had um, basically had some very serious injuries. And uh, people said, you know, John, or John Stephen, you should just give up. I mean, it's okay. But you know what? He stood up, even with his injuries, he stood up and he began to run. And as he, you know, the the uh, main crowd had left. There were just a few people that were left. And they saw John Stephen Akari coming into the um, stadium. He was up an hour late. And they could see that he was in some distress. Well, they began to cheer him on and it stirred him up. And he raised his hands in victory as if he had won the race, even though he was an hour late. And then finally, when he crossed the finish line, the reporters walked up to him and said, why did you finish the race? And he said simply this. He says, my country sent me here to win or to run this race. He says, why would I not finish this race? Well, Father, that's how we are. We need to finish our race. We're not to 
worry about what other people are doing. We shouldn't be looking to the side at, because when we look to the side and when we look around, we often fall down and do what happened to John Stephen Akari. Now, I'm not saying that that's what happened, but he did get in a collision with another runner. But Lord, thank you for the John Stephen Akaris, the individuals who finish the race at the end of our race. We're going to hear either one of two statements. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest or depart from me, you worker of iniquity. It, it, it all depends on who we're running the race for. If we're running the race for ourselves and we're running it in our own strength, that is what we're going to hear. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. But if we are running the race for the Lord, then we will have the privilege of hearing what Paul said when he says, I am now ready to be offered. He says, I am finished the race. Henceforth, there's a victor's crown of righteousness for me, but not only for me, but all for those who look forward to his appearing. Lord, that's what we want to hear today. That's what we want to see throughout this day. Father, help us today to walk in that wonderful, wonderful reality. Help us, Lord, today to become exactly what you taught us to do. Father, thank you today for the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, today for the wonderful opportunity that we've had today to pray, to spend time with you, to pray not only for ourselves, but for others as well, and to remind ourselves in this time and place of prayer the priorities of life. Help us, Lord, throughout this day to practice those priorities of life, to put you first in every aspect of our lives. And Father, today we thank you for this opportunity of prayer, and we ask it all now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you like what you've heard today being prayed, of course, I would encourage you to press the like button and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have lots of different things on this YouTube channel that can challenge you and inspire you and also encourage you. You have yourself a great and godly day. My name is Robert Dean Steele.